I'll admit it. I have global warming anxiety. No, it's worse than that. I have global warming anxiety anxiety. I don't know how much I should be worried. I mean, we're bombarded by conflicting opinions. You've got the scientists going, burning fossil fuels heats the atmosphere, record temperatures, extreme weather. And then you've got the skeptics going, oh, don't be silly. The earth has always had warming cycles. Human activity has nothing to do with it. And then I feel sorry for the poor guy who's caught in the middle. We don't know what to think. Mm -hmm. So I've decided to go on a quest. I'm going to find the top experts and I'm going to get answers to three questions. Is there climate change? Are we causing it? And if so, is there anything we can do about it? Here's what we know for sure. The decade beginning in the year 2000 was the hottest decade ever recorded. Arctic ice has melted to the lowest levels in recorded history, and sea levels have risen eight inches since 1870. The impacts of climate change are becoming progressively more serious. If anyone knows the details, it's the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which was created by the United Nations in 1988. Its job is to collect climate change studies from around the world and draw conclusions. Its chairman is Raj Pachari. Most of the warming that is taking place is the result of human actions. So that is greenhouse gases? Absolutely, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide being the most dominant. So what makes scientists so sure that those gases are building up in the atmosphere? Easy. Every week, they go out and rustle up some air. We're like 2.2 miles above sea level. Yes. You don't let cars up for the last mile. Yes. Why? Why all this fuss? We want to know that we're getting clean background air, unchecked by any sort of local pollution. This measuring station in Boulder, Colorado, is run by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Remember, there could be three feet of snow here, or five feet of snow. This is how you get in? NOAA's Dwayne Kitsis shows me how it's done. This is one of 70 sample sites in our network around the world, globally, so that these are different points on a grid, if you will, of the surface of the Earth. 20,000 flasks a year from all over the world, at other locations, the air is sampled from the top of thousand-foot towers. Anything to make sure that the sample isn't contaminated by nearby civilization. All of those bottles from around the world get shipped to labs like this one, which analyze the gases inside. One after the other, they get injected into all the measurement machines. Peter Tons is the chief scientist at NOAA's Global Monitoring Division. That air sample collecting program is his baby. Data show that CO2 is going up. There's absolutely zero doubt about that. Is anybody still arguing that um, these changes in temperatures are just part of natural Earth cycles? Oh, they have been, yes. There are these natural fluctuations of climate. Uh, however, there is something different. You look at the rate of increase when the Earth was in one of its natural cycles, so what we're now having is a hundred times as fast as what was happening during these natural cycles. Well, then how can there be such a thing as this skeptic community? There's only a small fraction of skeptics who want to deny that the increase of greenhouse gases is due to mankind. Most of them actually accept that. That's true. There aren't many climate change deniers anymore. But there's still plenty of discussion, and that's the polite word for it, about how much the planet is changing. So this is the global average temperature record with 39,000 stations all around the world averaged together. This is the temperature record. Berkeley physics professor Richard Muller and his daughter Elizabeth were global warming skeptics until they spent two years conducting their own study. The thick black line is carbon dioxide plus volcanoes, right. and everything else is the actual temperature record. And the amazing thing is how well the two fit right on top of each other. In a New York Times editorial, the Mullers describe themselves as converted global warming skeptics. But they sure don't sound very converted. The number of hurricanes has not been going up. The number of tornadoes has not been going up. What about the droughts? And the, and the fires in the West. Well, that's because we're building closer to the fire areas. The number of fires in the United States has actually been decreasing with time. What about polar bears? 
They're dying because of global warming, no? No, there's no good scientific evidence for that. There's a problem that some people, whenever they see something they don't like, they attribute it to global warming, whether it's the death of the frogs uh, or the demise of the corals in, in, in the Pacific Ocean. But that's a kind of cherry picking, where they're simply saying, if it's bad, it must be global warming. And that brings us to the elephant in the room, Hurricane Sandy the largest Atlantic hurricane ever recorded. The damage might wind up costing $50 billion, second only to Hurricane Katrina. Are these super storms related to global warming? There's two things to think about. Uh, one is, will there be more storms? And the second is, will more of those storms be intense? John Mutter teaches right. environmental science at Columbia University. What's happening is that if the world is warmer overall, the area that's occupied by the tropics will get larger. So if, if the tropics expand, they'll bring with them their tropical weather, which includes hurricanes. So imagine that in now, we have 10 hurricanes per year, and two of them are really monsters. In the future, the expectation is there'll still be 10, but four of them will be monsters. There may be plenty of legitimate scientific disagreement and plenty of nasty bickering online about how much climate change we're seeing now. But the really frightening part is what's coming. I can actually show you temperature over centuries. Beth so Russell runs a NOAA exhibit called Science on a Sphere, which can present massive amounts of temperature data visually. Here we are in the 1880s, 90s, now we're in 1900. We've seen some changes in temperature through time, but we really start to notice a trend um, past the year 2000, especially. Continuing to step through time, the globe's starting to turn more yellows and reds. It's bacon in here. Yeah, it's pretty dramatic what we show in this model. It gets us up to 717 parts per million of carbon dioxide, which is almost double what we have today. There's one thing that models seem to agree upon, that is, there will be more extreme weather. That means crop failures, for example. Oh. Extreme storms also will drive people from their homes. International conflicts would, could easily result from it. The problem now is us. So now we don't unite and try to do something about it. We all bicker yeah. until it happens. The Even on. the Mullers are worried yeah, about the, the future. Answers. We don't care about what we have already seen in terms of the warming, which has been quite small. What we care about is the warming that we're going to have over the next 50 years. Why? What will happen? I mean, there's lots of people who say, oh, we're going to have more hurricanes, we're going to have more droughts, we're going to have um, more problems. But the fact is, we don't know. Here's something else nobody can agree on, what to do about global warming. I believe that by approaching this with these interim solutions of energy efficiency and clean natural gas, that that can get us to the era 30, 40, 50 years from now when solar and wind and nuclear can all be competitive and, and, and take over at that point. China will have to be a big part of the solution. China surpassed the United States in 2006. By the end of this year, uh, we'll be producing twice the greenhouse gases of the United States. Even there, the IPCC's Raj Pachauri sees glimmers of hope. I spend a lot of time in China. I see a distinct uh, acceptance of the fact that they need to move to a low carbon future now. So the debate continues about how much the Earth is warming and exactly what the effects will be. But on the three key questions, all my experts are unanimous. Is climate change real? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Climate change is real and we've just seen the beginning of it. Is human activity contributing to it? Yes. 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 Over 90% evidence that human beings are responsible. There is no doubt in my mind that humanity is the main cause. And is there anything we can do about it? Yes. Yes. Certainly. Yes. We can do a lot. If we decide this is serious, we can avoid most of it.